In this video, we're going to talk about subspaces of general vector spaces. We've already talked about subspaces of Rn, and the general case is quite similar. The idea of a subspace is that it's a vector space that lives inside another vector space. If we want to show that a set is a subspace, we don't have to check all of the tedious conditions that vector addition is well behaved and scalar multiplication is well behaved. That's because if the set is already a subset of a vector space and has the addition, the operations of addition and scalar multiplication as in that vector space, then we already know that that, that addition is well behaved and that scalar multiplication is well behaved. So we don't have to check the tedious conditions and all we have to check are the fun conditions. So let's see what the fun conditions are. Just as in the case of Rn, a subspace of a general vector space, V, is a non-empty set that's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So what that means is that we have some non-empty set, S, that's a subset of some vector space, and for every two elements, X and Y, in S, the sum, X plus Y, is also in S. That means that it's closed under vector addition, and also for every element of S and every scalar R and every scalar C, C times X is also in S. So if we want to show that a set S is a subspace, we have to check three things. We have to check that it's non-empty, we have to check that it's closed under vector addition, and then we have to check that it's closed under scalar multiplication. We can see that a subspace of a vector space V always has to contain the zero element of V. So say that we have some subset of a vector space V that's a subspace. Now as it's a subspace, it must be non-empty. Therefore, there's some element X in S. Now we can see that it contains the zero element of V in a couple different ways. First, as we just saw in the element, elementary consequences video, for any element x of a vector space, 0 times x is the 0 element. So therefore, since s is a subspace and closed under scalar multiplication, it must contain the 0 element of v. We can also see this another way. As S is a subspace and closed under scalar multiplication, if it contains X, then it also contains minus 1 times X. And if it contains X and minus 1 times X, then it also must contain their sum, which is just the zero element of V. Thus, any subspace must contain the zero element. We already saw some examples of subspaces when we talked about the vector space of all real-valued functions. So, for example, we saw that the set of all polynomials was a vector space. And since any polynomial is itself a real-valued function, from the real numbers to the real numbers, the set of all polynomials is a subspace of the vector space of all real-valued functions. Then we even saw a subspace of the set of all polynomials. We looked at the set of all polynomials of degree at most n, and we also saw that this was a vector space. If we add two polynomials of degree at most n, we get another polynomial of degree at most n. And similarly, if we multiply a polynomial of degree at most n by a scalar, we get a polynomial of degree at most n. And remember that we made sure to say that we included the constant zero function with the polynomials of degree at most n. So this set also contains a zero element. Finally, we can see another set that is a subspace of all of these vector spaces above. And that is the set consisting only of the constant zero function. Again, there's not much to check that this is a subspace it contains 
an element, it contains the zero function, and also the zero function plus itself is just the zero function, and any scalar times the zero function is equal to the zero function. Therefore, this set consisting only of the zero function is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. Perhaps it's also useful to consider a non-example. So if we were to consider the subset of functions that on zero evaluate to one, this would not be a subspace. You can see that because if f of zero is equal to one, then if we look at f plus f evaluated at zero, that's going to be equal to f of zero plus f of zero, which is two. Therefore, it's not in this set of functions that evaluate to one at zero. Therefore, this set is not closed under vector addition. Now let's look at a subspace of the vector space of matrices. For concreteness, let's focus on three by three matrices and consider the vector space of all three by three matrices. Let's look at a subset of three by three matrices with the property that their diagonal entries sum to zero. Remember that we said that the trace of a matrix was the sum of its diagonal entries. So in other words, here we're considering the set of three by three entries whose trace is equal to zero. Now I claim that this is a subspace. So let's go ahead and check the three things that we need to check. First, let's check that it contains the all zero matrix, the zero element of the vector space of three by three matrices. So if we look at the all zero matrix, in this case, the three by three all zero matrix, of course, every diagonal entry is zero, so the sum of the diagonal entries is zero. So indeed, S does contain the all zero matrix. Now let's check that the set S of matrices whose diagonal entries sum to zero is closed under addition. So to do this, say that we have two matrices A and B in S. That means that the sum of the diagonal entries of A, A11 plus A22, plus a33 is equal to zero. And similarly, the sum of the diagonal entries of b is equal to zero. Now, if we look at a plus b, the diagonal entries are going to be a11 plus b11, that's the one one, one, one entry. The two two entry is a22 two two plus b22. Two two and the 3-3 th the three, three entry is A-3-3 three, three plus B-3-3. Three, three. And now if we just rearrange the sum, this is of course A-1-1 one, one plus A-2-2 two, two plus A-3-3 three, three plus B-1-1 one, one plus B-2-2 two, two plus B-3-3. Three, three. And now we know that this is zero and this is zero, therefore the sum is zero. This shows that A plus B is in S as well. Now let's check that the set S is closed under scalar multiplication. To do this, say we have some matrix A in S and some real scalar. Now if we look at C times A, the diagonal entries of this matrix are going to be CA1, CA11, that's the 1, 1 entry, the 2, 2 entry is going to be C times A, 2, 2. And the 3, 3 entry is going to be C times A, 3, 3. So this is just equal to C times A, 1, 1 plus A, 2, 2 plus A, 3, 3. And now since A is in S, we know that this sum is equal to 0. And C times 0 is equal to 0. So C times A is in S as well. So now we've checked all the three conditions and the subset of three by three matrices whose diagonal entries sum to zero is indeed a subspace.